Hello everyone, Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are going to talk about simply and easily creating game routed characters in Blender. And yes, there's going to be an add-on, and the add-on is going to do 99% of the work. And that makes life great, because frankly, creating characters that are game ready is not a fun process. So there have been a number of pieces of software over the years that attempt to solve this. Uh, for many Blender users, the most popular is probably going to be Make Human, but on top of that there is... Um, uh, let's see, Poser, there's Daz Studio, etc. But there is also Manuel Bastioni, uh, available over at manuelbastioni.com, and I will link this down below. Now, if you're thinking this is a whole lot like Make Human, there's a reason behind that. Manuel Bastioni, if I'm probably butchering his name, but anyways, he was the original founder of that project. Two years ago, he spun off and started this instead. And it is very impressive. So I'm going to be showing you the process in a second. The cool thing with this guy is you can make uh, traditional style animation ready characters, full cycle setup on them. Uh, you can even do anime style or fantasy style. And we're going to look at that right now. So all you need to do basically is come on in and do download. Uh, this will bring down the zip file that we will install in a second. Um, if you're interested, I've already actually covered Make Human in a prior video. I will link this down below. The, the two are very similar, but Make Human is no longer integrated directly in Blender. It is a standalone application and they work differently. And I would actually argue that uh, Manuel Bastioni is actually more friendly towards a game development rig. So without further ado, let's go about installing it. All you have to do is file, go to user preferences, add-ons, install from file, and select that zip file you just downloaded. I've already done this, uh, so what I need to do now is go to, once again, user preferences, add-ons, search for it, uh, and you'll see there it is, characters, uh, manual of Astioni lab. Just go ahead and enable that, and we are 95% of the way there. So I'm gonna just delete our default cube. We've got our normal scene here. You will see now over here in tools, we have a new tab and it is pretty straightforward. Basically you come on up here and you can select the basic body type you want. You've got a choice between Caucasian, Asian, Afro, and yeah, that's about it, males and females. Uh, plus you've got uh, classic anime, shoujo, uh, anime classic, uh, modern, and then realistic anime style, male and female. Uh, plus, you've also got fantasy uh, e uh, female elves, male elves, and for some reason, male dwarves, but uh, kind of misogynistic here. No female dwarves. Why are female dwarves always getting the short end of the stick? Anyway, so you've got a lot of the basic, you know, bipedal archetypes you want to work from. Let's go simple and start it with uh, Caucasian male. So just go ahead and pick the body type you want. Uh, you've got an option to have it basically create uh, skin shaders, etc. Cycles shader setup for you, which you want it to do most of the time. And um, you can have it set up the lighting for you, which you also probably want it to do. And if that's the case, go ahead and click init character. And it will run and do its thing. I'm running on a slower computer today, but as you can see, it is still a pretty quick process. And it created us this guy. Hey. How you doing? So that is the character it created for us, and we have a whole ton of control over it. Let's bring up and look at the wireframe on this guy. And you will see it is very clean. Even in the face, the face is ready for um, nice edge loops, nice clean edge loops, good animation. Uh, the, the, um, the joints and seams are nicely hidden and pushed away. This is pretty much how you would model this character perfectly in real time. Um, maybe a couple of issues here and there, but really uh, not bad at all. And this guy is fully rigged, which is very cool. So come down here, you see the skeleton. Um, we have a full skeleton underneath. Come on down here. By default, it's using uh, straight lines. But you see, it's a pretty simple rig. You've got the full setup for your hands. You'd be ready to go. But this guy can be taken into well, your animator immediately uh, posed and you're off to the races. And you can actually even bring in uh, BVH captured animations and apply them right away. So if you've got some uh, mocap going on, you don't have to set up the rig at all. It's set up for you. They've done a really good job here. Now let's switch over and look at this in material view. And you can see there is the effect of the shader. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, let me just turn x-ray back off. Go back to our geometry like so and I guess I will uh, deselect so that we get a better look at it but that is not even approaching the capabilities of this guy so see so it created us a default but obviously we don't obviously want to go with the default every time so we can change things up here we can make this guy uh, so here is 68 years old or we can make him 
Uh, 20 years old, you can see the, the immediate difference in him. We can jack up his body mass. Uh, we can jack up his tone levels. And then go through, it goes down beyond that. We've got character libraries. We could basically bring in uh, body types really quickly. So we could create a stocky character. Uh, we can create a normal character. Uh, we can create an athletic character, and we'll leave it at that. Uh, but on top of that, so then go on, we got our face we can set up. So different expressions, default expressions. We can do a neutral expression, which I think is what it starts with. Shy, anxious, upset, excited, etc. So you've got a lot of control over it. You also see you have teeth, not showing very well there, and a tongue, etc. all back there. So you have a level of detail here that if you do need to do facial animations, it is there. Now you will notice there were no bones in the face, there is no face rig, so you probably have to set it up for um, you know, shape-driven keys, but uh, the detail is all there for you to work with. So moving on from the facial expressions, we can move on to, we can just do a random generator, it kind of spits out instead of having it, you know, do settings, etc. We've got default poses. As I said earlier, we can import um, BVH motion captured animation. Uh, we can set this guy in various different starting poses. Like so. Now one thing you may be wondering at this point in time is, can I use these models in my game? And the answer is yes. This guy is using uh, the CC BY 4 license, which basically the Creative Commons license says more or less nutshell, not a lawyer explanation. If you use this in your credits, you gotta acknowledge that you used blah, blah, blah um, to make your, uh, so model X created using blah, 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 provided by blah. So there is an attribution clause required, but that's it. You can use this in a commercial game. Um, you can do pretty much whatever you want with it, except for derived works, I believe, directly derived works. So you could do, say, a 2D rendering, but you couldn't take this model, generate it, and then sell it on a model exchange. Uh, but otherwise, the license is very, very liberal. You could easily use this in your game. You just have to give attribution back to the original author, and there is no price tag attached. So let's keep going through the options here. We've also got the ability to um, skin this guy. Now, one thing to catch is you can't change out the um, the vertex count or the vertex indexing. It's a requirement of the setup, um, so you can't really like do a subdivision to add detail. But if you do come down here to modifiers, you'll see there are several modifiers applied to this guy, including subdivision surface automatically for you. Uh, but if you come in here and want to sculpt, add more detail, etc., you're kind of stuck with the mesh as it is. So you see here we can switch out. Uh, the hues, you need to enable, what does that say? Subdiv and dispel to see dispel invert. Ah, okay, so we can change, oh, that's eyes. Uh, skin age, skin bump, skin complexion. So Donald Trump or uh, a dark elf, I guess. So somewhere in between, still a little orange there. Ah, let's get that guy back up a bit. All right. Let's go back to 0 0.4. So you've got control over how your skin is displayed. Uh, I'll go proxy tools, nothing there for you right now. Uh, there are some th things in the works. I can't actually find them for doing things like hair. Um, and then when you're done, you come here and do a finalize. You can pick the resting pose. Uh, this is pretty much an A pose. What's most common for a resting pose is actually a T pose. So you can set that. And then when you're done, basically just save and back up character so you can finalize it out. Sure, finalize it. This guy, it's uh, baking out the textures for us here. And we are set, ready to go. And that is pretty much it. So if you want to come in now and um, select your armature, for example, uh, you can go into, there's your T-pose that we set up. It's nice resting pose. Go into pose mode. And we have the ability now to um, pose. Uh, come on, skeleton. Oh, what did I set my bones to? Uh, I like these better. So we could now go back into pose mode, set over time, and of course, pose however you wish. And you'll notice as I am doing the rotations, our joints are nice and clean. You get good, you're not bending or tearing. Uh, let's see if I can, you can 
turn that way, you'll see nice muscle movement in the corner. So realistically, the um, the armature it is set up for you is ready to go, uh, not overly complicated. What you might find, you, you have a little extra detail for a, like a low detail game in the hands here, uh, but that's about the only fault that you could possibly have, and that's either a feature or a bug depending on who you are. Um, so uh, amazingly capable of creating realistic, capable humans in a very, very short span of time. Uh, now let's do a quick reset and we'll show you one of the anime and the fantasy versions instead. So I'm just going to go through it. it's the exact same process, but you've got just different base messages going, mes meh, meshes going on. Let's come on back in here. We'll go back to our add-ons, make sure it is enabled. I hadn't clicked save because I don't know how many takes of this stupid video I am having to take. So it is now there. Go back and let's create a different. So we're going to go create an anime style, um, classic male. And in it, and you will see the end result is well, that's Astro Boy basically. Uh, but we got the same level of control going on. Uh, we can change out the characters, but you'll notice that the options here, for example, I'll go into the character library. We have uh, different setups, for example. We've got, we can change them out to a bodybuilder, for example. We're getting a little bit closer to the Goku look. Um, and your facial expressions are different. So, for example, we could turn him to being in pain. But what gets really impressive here is your shader is completely different. So let's go back to facial expression that actually has eyes open and you will see, wow, I can't believe that they've got the texturing set up. So basically you're getting the anime rendering look uh, right off the hopper, the different options for the different types. So, you know, you're, you're getting completely different results if you're going for a different art style, but using the exact same process. And you've got the same level of control and same level of options over here. But here you're seeing the anime option with, I'm assuming this is a freestyle renderer setup going on, but completely different look. Uh, you can obviously change out all of these different values and attributes. So we can change, you know, these right here. Uh, we change the skin values again, etc. Um, and I believe poses are slightly different though. Yeah, so you got different poses going on here too, but once again, ta-da, we're flying. So it is staggeringly awesome what this tool can actually do. And as you see up here, we're talking 14,000 polygons. That's very clean. That's very capable for even pretty much the lowliest end game at this point in time. Now, one of the catches that you should all should be aware of is apparently you can only have one character in a scene at a time as it's set up. So once you've got your characters all set up and done, you have to publish them out. There is a documentation process on um, the website. If you head on back here to their, uh, their uh, I think it's under FAC, um, there are guides here basically saying that you can't have uh, two of these set up in the same scene. So you have to basically publish it out. Uh, but this is more meant as a character creation thing anyway. So that shouldn't be a deal breaker to pretty much anybody. And finally, let's take a quick look at the fantasy option. So click down, once again, get rid of that guy. Let's enable the plugin one last time. So. Same process all over again. This time, instead, I am going to create a fantasy female elf and knit the character. And ta-da. There is your end result. And uh, so far, I've not rendered out any of these. Obviously, we rendered them. We are going to get a lot more details. So let me switch over to the camera here. Uh, camera to view. Like so. And once again, I didn't go through it, but you have your um, other options available, prefigs. Once again, the types are different based off of the um, base mesh that is chosen. Um, ditto for animation, so we've got the animation options again. So we could have her in a sorceress pose or standing or slightly misogynistic glamour poses, etc. Uh, but we go ahead, we can do a render on this guy. And well, here I'll pause. You'll see the end result with the shaders in. I obviously don't have near enough rays being cast, so we're going to get the speckling going on here. But you see the eye shaders are built in. The skin texture is very accurate. Uh, I should have done the detail up a great deal higher, but um, 
it's it's pretty staggeringly awesome what you get out of this. So that is um, the Manuel Bastioni plugin for creating humans. Uh, you can create as again anime style, fantasy style, or traditional style. Pretty much every single basic physical body type. And you can do it in a matter of minutes. And then on top of it, it is set up, rigged for animation. It's got a nice clean mesh. It is ready to be exported out to the world. Um, if you haven't added this one to your arsenal, definitely do so. It's a great little package. And be honest, of the available options of Make Human, of um, Poser, of Daz, this is the one I like working with the most, too. This is an awesome little package. So, anyways, that's it for now. I will also, again, link down the video for Make Human, as well as linking down the um, Manuel Bastioni website down below. Uh, do check this out. The number one thing I think Manuel Bastioni is looking for right now is exposure. So, if you like this, do share it. Let as many people know as possible, because this is a very cool tool that is being updated. There's a lot of work behind this. Completely free. Definitely, you know, he deserves more exposure on this one, so. If you do like it, do share it. And of course, please do click that like button. And if you're interested in this kind of stuff, we cover all kinds of game development related topics. Uh, do hit that subscribe button. All right, that's it for now. I will talk to you all later. See you later. Bye.